Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our weekly lecture. Very glad to have everyone here. Today is the first Wednesday of the month. So as we usually do, we're gonna, going to have our lecture in English. Um, I try my best. <laughs> um, and then as you know, today we're going to start with our uh, prayer. So I'll ask everybody to just breathe deeply and let's connect with ourself, with the spiritual world around us and start our prayer with the spirit of gratitude. Gratitude Jesus for our families, for our homes. Amongst all the opportunity to be here together, to pause in our busy lives, in everything that comes at us every day with bad news or anything that we see around and really just stopping to connect with the spiritual world with the trust that God is guiding us. That whatsoever that happens with us in our lives They're all for our progress. They're all for our learning. They're all for our growth. Help us, God, to have this unstoppable faith that together with our hard work and learning, we can continue with our evolution as eternal spirits. Thank you so much for never abandoning us on the contrary showing in every little thing every day how amazing how caring and lovable loving you are that we can continue to use jesus's example in everything that we you we do and how we love each other how we love ourselves how we continue to learn about ourselves so we can be our better selves every day. I want to ask all the good spirits that are here tonight to guide me through the reading, to provide the inspiration to deliver a message that will touch our hearts and that we can take to our lives every day. Thank you so much for this community we are building that we strengthen every time we come together to talk about the learnings and to talk about how we can be better as we introduce every single thing that we learn together in our lives. Please bless our, bless our waters mm. and help us get through our lives with our families and friends at work and around us, all to make this world also a better world. Thank you so much, God. And so it is. Uh, well, so the, the lecture today is on our Daily Bread book. It is on chapter 162. And start with the, the, the passage of 1 Corinthians. When Paul said, now to each of the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. With the revivification of pure Christianity and the spiritist groups with Jesus, the same preoccupation exists, which used to torture the students of the apostolic times with regards to mediumship. The majority of the workers involved in evangelization become anxious for the immediate development of their incipient faculties. In certain centers, they insist on, achievement, on an achievement superior to the possibility that they dispose of. In others, they dream of great phenomena. The problem, however, does not lay in the exterior acquisitions. Let each individual, individual enrich his own intimate illumination, intensifying his spiritual powers through knowledge and through love, and he will enter into the possession of eternal treasures in a natural way. 
Many students would like to be great clairvoyants or admirable prognosticators of the future, motivated by the prospect of superiority. However, they do not even deign to meditate on the sweat of this sublime achievement. They are inclined toward profit, but do not reflect over the effort to achieve it. In that regard, it is interesting to recall that Simon Peter, whose spirit felt so happy to be with the glorious master in the tower, was not able to withstand the anguish felt by his friend flagellated in the Calvary. It is justifiable for the disciple to hope and seek spiritual aggrandizement. However, whoever does have a humble spiritual faculty should not be unappreciative because a fellow student has a more expressive quality. Let each person work with the material he was given, convinced that the Supreme Lord does not take part in the activities of spiritual manifestations according to the human whims, but rather according to its general utility and usefulness. So this, uh, this reflection that Emmanuel helps us to make, it's all about uh, the spiritual manifestation and, and he, he kind of dips down a little bit in mediumship. It's a concept that it's not new for us that study spiritism. We know that mediumship is possible. We know that this is how these spirits communicate with us. There is a way for them to communicate with, with us and that mediumship expresses many different ways. Uh, we, we know some very uh, famous mediums that write books like Chico Xavier, Divaldo Franco. We know some manifestations, uh, even through the history of spiritism with the turning tables. So this is, this is a concept that is not new to us. But I think the most important thing that Emmanuel brings us for, to the reflection is not, he's not questioning if they exist or not. He's not questioning, um, you know, if, they, if, if we need to believe in them. Even the, the, when Paul says here in Corinthians, when he says, now to each, each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. He is not questioning or saying, you know, if they existed or, you know, we don't know if they existed. He's, he's making a statement that they do, but the call out that Emmanuel gives us is they exist for the common good, right? Here in the end of the text, when it says, it's to the general utility and usefulness that we should be glad and proud to be allowed to have this connection with the spiritual world and think about that as a gift to the good, not for my own good only. It could be to my good, but not for my only good, my good only, but for the people around me and the goodness that I'm, I'm making and I'm doing to the world and the people around me. So I think this is the main message of, uh, of this that I wanted just to share a little bit more uh, according to the books that that also gives us more explanation this is a this is a topic that has an, an extensive uh, content around you know the mediums book even uh, the spirit books the gospel according to spiritism but I thought I brought just a little reflection since we only have 20 minutes to go over and to start with that reflection is um, just to think about the historically even before we could even think about spiritism, even before we could even think about Alan Kardec and, and all his, his teachings, we have seen those spiritual manifestations through history, even if we think about Moses, if we think about Jesus, um, and, and a lot of other people that came through, through history and, and brought uh, spiritual manifestations or, or message prophets that, that brought messages of things that you know, prophesizing things that will happen in the future. So if we go to the book of mediums, Alan Kardec says this, if the belief in spirits and in their manifestations were an isolated exception, the product of a theory, it might with some show of reason be attributed to illusion. But how is it that we find this belief in vigor among all peoples, ancient and modern? as well as in the writings recognized as sacred in all non-religions. 
It is, say some critics, because man in all ages has sought the marvelous. I didn't bring the full, I didn't bring the full, um, the full part of the book here, but then he will talk more about what is marvelous, what is manifestation. So it just gives a broader explanation. But the highlight here for me is how he emphasizes that amongst all people, ancient and modern, moderns, amongst writings in history and not in pretty much every religion, we have seen spiritual manifestations. So again, it's just a reinforcement that it's not a matter of if they exist, if we believe they exist, they're there, right? We have seen spiritual manifestations through different religions, through different historic moments, and through different uh, people that came through history to help us to evolve, to help us to, to, to progress in the world and to bring messages uh, and to support. Even when we think about Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ before Jesus, everything that came before him, even announcing that he was coming. And then after he came, all the manifestations that happened through his work and through his messages as well. One thing that I, I like, and I think it's very powerful when I, we think about mediumship is that for, for a long time, and maybe even today, um, we used to, we would believe that if you were a medium, you were some kind of a, like a special person. If you were able to listen from the, the spiritual world or um, to write books, you've got this special gift. I agree that it's a special gift, right? That um, as Emmanuel said in the, in the, in the book that we read, um, it also comes with a price, a compromise, right? Work, it's not, it's not just receiving it, it's a lot of giving. But I think what is important for us and what we believe is that we are all potential mediums. And I say potential in terms of how do we exercise that, right? Because we can, we are all mediums, we can all have the gift, uh, but not all of us express or, or bring them to life or, or um, use it to help us or to help others. So that's why I say potential medium, mediums to, to put it in practice, that's what I mean. Um, but we know as a gift that we all have it. Even our intuition is the beginning of our mediumship, is a piece of, is an expression of mediumship. Even that voice that we hear in our head that it tells us to go on the right instead of going to the left, um, it's telling us not to take a route when we're driving or um, not to go further in a relationship or in a friendship. Even that, that intuition, it's a start of mediumship. It, it's, a, it's a way of mediumship to express. But there's, there are different ways to connect with the spiritual world, right? It, there are different ways for us to receive messages from the different worlds. Sometimes it's even a dream when we're sleeping. Uh, that's why we speak a lot about um, how, the importance of us to, saying our prayers before we sleep. So that will help us with the, the companions that we're going to have during the night. And by we, I mean our spirits are going to have during the night, right? Um, so even within, within those expression in the dream, uh, we're all mediums. It's not something that makes someone special in terms of differentiating us. It might mean that some people has a different in, in terms of evolution, but we know we're all evolving. And the important message of love, of service, is how do we use that gift? How do we interpret that connection that the spiritual world is making with us and how do we use that do we silence that voice do we bring that voice forward do we charge to be heard so the the, the message that emmanuel emphasizes here is we all have the gift manifest spiritual manifestations happen and what do we do with that? So you using for the good, measuring how that's going to impact your life, but used to help others as well. And not just receive that gift and also not take advantage of others because of it. Another passage from the book of mediums 
uh, from Alan Kardec says that when a medium's faculty is developed, it must not be unduly or unwisely exercised. The pleasure it gives to beginners sometimes excites in them an enthusiasm that needs to be moderated. They should remember that the medianimic fac faculty is always given for sober use, never for the satisfaction of idle curiosity. See how important that is when it, when it says for sober use, not for our own satisfaction, not for our curiosity, for us to know connections in the spiritual world just because we wanted to know and be part of it. The other thing that I think is important here is just the acknowledgement that sometimes, you know, beginners feel excited about the enthusiasm of, of having this quote unquote gift. Um, and it's normal. And we also have to acknowledge we are uh, human beings that we're still in our, in our progress. We're still progressing, we're still learning. So we have all these faults, faults that put us in, in check sometimes uh, to be more humble, to be less selfish. So it's normal, so it's important to acknowledge that. But at the same time, we're emphasizing that we have to remember that we need to be sober. It's, it's, it's what we always say. It, depending on where you are, your morals, and how 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 is your thought process, your how if you're doing good or if you're doing bad, the same way there are parents who used to tell us when we were kids to have good friends and not bad ones that will potentially lead us to the bad way. It's the same thing with these spirits. If I am living a life that is full of my more of of right morals of good manner of um, goodness for others and caring, being a nice person. What kind of spirits do you think is going to be with me? We know about attraction, right? So I'm, I'm going to attract spirits that feel the same. I'm going to attract a spiritual world around me that is going to attract the same. But if I'm always doing something bad, if I'm always trying to take advantage of people, if I'm always mistreating people around me, if I'm in contact with things that are not very good for me or for my body, those are the kinds of spirits that is going to be around me as well. So whenever I try to make this communication with the spiritual world, who am I going to be attracting? If I have the gift, who am I going to be attracting? So those are the questions that we need to ask ourselves when we think about mediumship. It might sound fun and um, enthusiastic, but it's very serious gift that we should be very grateful to God to allow us to have. Because of it, we have learned so much. Because of it, we have brought peace to our hearts to know that life is eternal. Because of it, when we have a loss that hurts very much from someone that is special in our lives, it will continue to hurt. But knowing that this is just a temporary separation just gives us comfort. So the gift of connecting with the spiritual world and knowing that life is eternal was only possible because we had this channel to listen in however many different ways, to write books, to tell us in this world, in this planet, how the spiritual world works, to help us learn, to give us the opportunity to choose because we still have our free will, right? But when we know more, it just gives us more opportunities, more data points for us to choose. What are we doing in our lives today that is going to help us once we're on the other side. Another thing that I wanted to share about on the book of mediums um, is a question that is asked. So does the development of medianimity depend on the moral development, development of the medium? And the answer is no, strictly speaking. The medianimic faculty depends on the organism and is independent of the moral nature. This, however, 
is not the case as regards the use made of medianimity, which may be good or bad according to the moral qualities of the medium. So what he's saying here is that moral development is not a blocker for you to have or not have mediumship. Like I mentioned before, we all can have it. However, what, how moral will impact how we use it, right? How do we use, am I, am I charging? Am I taking advantage of people? because of it. So that's how moral has an impact. And we all know that all the choices that we make, uh, we're going to be responsible for them. So this is, this is very important for us to reflect on it. Um, I know uh, we were all been working and reading and learning more and by, by chance we will potentially develop more of that mediumship. So I thought this message is very important for, for all of us to reflect on it. And in the gospel according to spiritism, that's the, the passage that reinforces what I meant. So the chapter 26 talks about give for free what has been received graciously. So heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely yet have received, freely give. And then that, that, this is in Matthew and the Bible and then the explanation in the gospel according to spiritism tell us, give for free what has been received graciously is what Jesus told his disciples. With this recommendation, it is prescribed that no one be charged for something for which nothing has been paid. Now, what they had received graciously was the faculty of healing those who were sick and that for of expelling devils, that is to say bad spirits. God gave them this faculty for free for the, the alleviation of those who suffer and as a means of propagating faith. Jesus then recommended that they did not turn this into an object of commercialization, neither is speculation nor a means of livelihood. So that's why we see so many, good examples, um, especially in Brazil, the ones that we know best, like Chico Xavier, Divaldo, who has spent their entire life using that mediumship to help others. They have never taken any of the profit from any of the books. They have invested in the community. They have donated to different groups. They have invested in continue to spread the word of spiritism. So we all could learn more. I love when he says that um, God gave them this faculty for free for the alleviation of those who suffer. Because again, I think that the, the spiritism is such a comfort message that bring to all of us. One, about the free will, or how can we with our actions and our love and our moral um, continue to evolve and planting more great seeds because we are the ones who are going to, um, to harvest those seeds in the future. If not in this life, in the future lives, right? Because I think we all agree that we might have a few more lives before we get to the perfect world. <laughs> uh, so I love that it's a reinforcement of let's use our mediumship. Let's use um, this connection with the spiritual world to alleviate suffer, to alleviate pain. It does not take pain away. It just helps us not to be desperate. It just helps us not to think this is it. it. It helps us not to think life ends here. What if, and then when I'm dead or somebody in my family, that's it. This is my last opportunity. It is not, and it's too sad um, that we don't have uh, a connection, but it's a, it's a temporary separation. It helps us to think about eternal life. It helps us to think about our chance and opportunity to, to evolve and to continue to evolve in progress. It also helps us to be grateful for what we have right now and value that a lot. 
So we know that there are a lot of spirits on the spiritual world today waiting for the opportunity to come here and have the flesh experience so they can continue to learn. They can repair a few things from, from past lives. And we are ones that had this opportunity. So it also helps us to have this heart of gratitude of saying, I'm going to make the best of this life because I had the opportunity to be here. There are millions of other spirits that would love to have the opportunities and they're in line. They'll, they'll come, but they're in line and we're here. So with that, um, I wanted to walk us through our final prayer, our virtual passy. So let's take a deep breath. Uncross arms and legs and just elevate our hearts and thoughts to the love of Jesus. Let's think about what an example he gave us when he came to this world, living a life where we could all see it's possible. It's possible to embrace being humble. It's possible to embrace loving everyone. It's possible to embrace elevating a community. So Jesus, tonight, to you and all these periods of truth that is around you and on your team, we ask you that we receive your blessing. We ask you that right now, we all receive in our bodies the healings that we need physically and emotionally. We ask you, Jesus, that you continue with us in every step of the way so we can continue to grow. Thank you, God, again for the opportunity to receive so many blessings. To be able to really feel energized with your love, with your care. That we may continue to focus our every effort on being a better person on being a better citizen so we can also help our beloved planet to go to a better place every day. Thank you so much. And so it is.